Welcome to everyone who is in um, Canyon School District who's watching this um, meeting. Um, I'm going to be recording what's behind the green tab. So let me see if I can share my screen here. And we'll go ahead and get started. So just professional development norms, be committed, be responsible, be respectful, and be safe. So let's get started right here. What is behind the green tab? And why do I want to be able to see it? So um, we're gonna just talk about this for a few minutes, in the next 30-ish um, minutes going forward. So your learning intention today is I am learning uh, more components of wonders so I can process writing into my planning. Um, when I, I you'll know you're successful when you identify one component to try over the next unit. So where are you going to be doing this in your day? Um, right here is where you have in your um, literacy block time built in for writing standards. And here it's been identified that you're doing items in the reading writing companion with the extended writing. There might be some lessons from the grammar lesson banks and any handwriting that you want to do. And this is an example from third grade. Most of you have at least 30 minutes, if not more. So right now you're living right here and doing the um, analytical writing that's in Wonders. And it might be spilling over into this time, but this is the time that is fleshed out behind the green tab. This you can find is a um, piece right here in page 208 of your um, document. So let's go ahead and move on. So when you turn to the green tab, I think I advanced one or two more slides, here we go. When you turn to the green tab, you will see a couple of um, pieces. You'll first see that there is one, um, there are actually two writing prompts or two pieces. So inside of that, you will see that there's a writing craft lesson bank, the grammar lesson bank, and the spelling lesson bank. There are three types of these, and we want you to prioritize writing over grammar, and we're gonna go over that in a little bit. These um, text pieces, they have you right here a pacing guide, it goes through that and you can see the 10 days of instruction if you're in grades two through eight. If you're in grades K and one, you have a five day sequence. So let's look at the pacing. Here's that 10 day pacing. Here there is always going to be a little writing craft lesson for each day. And then you will take off where they on the second week choose their topic they plan their sequence of events. They have descriptive details or the other pieces that they are putting in there to get that final component. Here's a fourth grade example of what that would look like behind the green tab. Here you have the two weeks and then in weeks three through four, finishing up those items where they use the genre and develop their own essay. If you only spend two weeks on a prompt, they are actually, they will give you another prompt that you can also select. There are two prompts. So um, also behind the green tab are spelling lists. We're asking that spelling is done with foundations. It's done weekly. And if you're in grades four and five, you have days that you can support spelling on lessons two and eight. And the additional activities are found here. There's also, they've taken this list here and divided that up into those differentiated lists. And if you take your students in the class details on the platform and put that they're on level, approaching, or beyond level, if you uh, put them there, these spelling lists for grades four and five will be generated for them in the student platform. So gone are the days where you have to make different lists for different kids because they're auto-generated in the Wonders platform. 
So let's talk a little bit about the writing. Here we can um, talk about how the writing is laid out for you. Um, what happens first in the writing, if you turn to the first page um, in the writing, the students have this, this is what it looks like for them in their textbook, because the student textbook really helps what you, for you to hone in on what you are doing. So the very first thing they are taught is how to analyze the rubric. So before we even go into the prompt or anything, how will we know we're successful if we are doing an expository writing? That's the example here. If you are doing a narrative or opinion, you'd be looking for a central idea or main idea. And so um, that's what you'd be looking for um, inside of those uh, prompts and you'd be teaching that. And so here you see central idea being done with um, expository text, and then it would be different if you did a narrative or opinion. The next mini lesson or the next part of your lesson in the sequence is students practice the rubric using a student exemplar model. So here a student has written to the prompt that they would be looking for and the prompt usually aligns to the, um, to the essential question. So um, here there's the student model and then the students would take out the rubric and look for examples of where the student has done something well in with using the rubric that they're also going to be scored with. If a student is using narrative text, they won't see you won't see a student example here. Instead, they will ask you to go back into your text set and look at how the author has done the narration on either a fable, poetry or um, a, another kind of um, text structure. So the next part then is we're going, now we know how we're going to be scored. So now we're going to analyze the prompt. So the students here analyze the prompt. There are some items in their reading writing companion to do that with. And there's also a mini lesson for you to help them with that. Along the way, you're also building anchor charts because they are now talking about central idea. So you've built an anchor chart around central idea and you're asking them to come back to that um, place, how they've seen authors do it in the text set so that now they can do it here. Then there will be sources. So now they're getting a new piece of text that they can compare. And here they have a prompt, whoops, sorry about that. Here they have a prompt where they are looking at these sources. So here we have life in the coral reef because they're talking about habitats. And then um, where are the bees and Everglade ecosystems? So we have three components here for them to get three sources to be able to talk about and analyze their prompt. After they've done all of that, now it takes them through the writing process. I'm not going to go through the writing process in detail because a lot of you know these components. First, they get ready to or organize their ideas. And here we have something that looks similar to a four square, but here they have six square. So they're starting to analyze their ideas. You could still use four square or you could use what they had in their reading writing companion. Then they start to draft their ideas to their prompt. And he notice here, there's a grammar connection built in. We're gonna come back to that in a minute. And then they go through and peer conference. And that's what is built right here. So they revise and go through that revision before they ever turn it in to you. You might say, well, where will they turn it into me? Well, what I would do is if I were an upper grade teacher, I would for sure throw this into Canvas so that I could create it there. I could also do it on a separate paper for, for them. I could have a, uh, if you built a reader's writer's notebook of any kind, you could have them write it in there. It, it depends. Any of those or any other ideas are going to be correct. 
So um, I'm going to introduce you now to the writer's notebook. It's digital. I'm going to play this short video. It's very short. And um, then we're going to come back to um, a couple of ideas to conclude. In grades two through six, 12 extended writing activities are available. They are referenced in your teacher edition, as well as your student's reading writing companion. It's suggested that students write in a writer's notebook for these activities. They can use a paper notebook or the online writer's notebook. Let's take a look at the online notebook and how you and your students can use it for writing activities. The writing process is completed twice in each unit, once in the first four weeks, and again in the final two weeks. Each step is indicated in your teacher's edition on the Language Arts page. Access the Writer's Notebook by clicking Writing and Research at the top of the screen and selecting Writer's Notebook. The Writer's Notebook opens on the My Students tab. Expand a class blade to view your students. Expand a student blade to view the workshops this student has worked on. They are listed by unit, lesson, and the stage the student has completed. The Teaching Resources tab lists all the resources available to help you when reviewing your student's writing. Click a resource to open it. The Student Resources tab lists the resources available to your students at each stage of the writing process. Click a resource to open it. The All Workshops tab lists all 12 exercises. Click a lesson title to preview the exercise instructions and available resources. You'll have to open the lesson for a particular student on the My Students tab to view that student's work. Your students access their writer's notebook by clicking right on their dashboard. You can also assign the writing activity so it appears on your students' to-do lists. The writer's notebook appears in the online lessons for week one, day five, and week five, day four in the Reading Writing Companion Expert Model lesson. The notebook exercise appears in the resource carousel. You can also find writer's notebook activities in your resource library in the writing category. Select assign this resource on the exercise action menu to assign it to your class. You will review your student's writing at each step in the writing process. On the My Students tab, expand a student blade to view the workshops the student has worked on, as well as the stage completed. Click the lesson or the stage to access the student's exercise. On the left side of the page is the area where your students complete their writing. The tabs correspond to every step in the writing process. The online writer's notebook allows the student to copy their work to the next step to work on it further. You can look at previous tab to review their older work and any changes made. The instruction tab on the right side contains the instructions and resources available for this step. This is also where you can access the scoring rubric. Any resources your students submit, such as the graphic organizer in the plan stage, will appear on your binder on the My Students Work tab. Before your review, you'll want to lock the current exercise so the student cannot make edits while you are reviewing it. Click the lock link above the tabs. Click OK to confirm. On the Comments tab, click the Add Comment button. Write your comment in the Add Comment pop up and click Save. To add a comment about a specific portion of the text, highlight the text and add a comment on the pop-up that appears. All your comments appear on the new comments blade. Your students will have to resolve all your comments before proceeding to the next step. These comments appear on the resolved comments blade as they are completed. All of your students' writing can be downloaded and printed. Click the Export to PDF button to create a printable file of what the student has written. Click the Printable Workshop button to create a printable version of the instructions and rubric for this workshop. Be sure to click the Unlock link to unlock the exercise so your student can get back into the workshop. Click the logo in the upper left corner to return to the main Writer's Notebook page. Use the buttons in the upper right corner to go directly to the information on that tab. You will continue this process with each student for each step in the writing activity. At the end of the exercise, on the final step, the student will publish their work and submit it. 
click the lock button on the instructions tab in the publish stage to lock the workshop. Students cannot go back and edit their work after they have published. You and your students can go back to previous workshops throughout the year to review their previous work. This concludes our guide to the writer's notebook. So let's talk a minute. Oh, hopefully you got something out of that um, short film. If all the things that we talked about behind the green tab in doing that process in the um, reading writing companion, then you could do digitally in that writing platform that I just showed you. So uh, let's talk a minute about how to teach grammar in context. There are grammar lessons and grammar worksheets that you can use in the Wonders platform. However, um, there is a lot of research about why you should teach grammar in context. In teaching grammar in context, you're teaching it during the writing time, and it's real about what kinds of um, sentence structures, what kinds of vocabulary, um, word forms that you are using in order to have that grammar. Um, be cemented. Grammar in isolation, it does not work. And so I challenge you to read this article. And if you want to read it, I have a link here for that. And it is recently published article about um, why, why kids need grammar and context. If you need extra support with wonders, um, I am um, I think it's a good idea for you to join the Wonders community. We've sent this out before, so you can use this QR code and register. There are teachers, uh, think of it as a giant Facebook for Wonders, where they're publishing um, ideas, um, documents, um, all kinds of things that you can get for free. So gone are the days that you need to go on Teacher Pay Teachers when you can get this for free. If you ask a question, Usually, um, program experts or other teachers will answer it within about 10 minutes. Again, thank you for attending this Bite Size PD. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to um, have me come out or myself or Leanne, and we're happy to see you in IPLC or any other place that you would want to engage, see you online. Any place you want to relicense your credit, make sure that you click the link. And uh, thanks for attending and watching this bite-sized PD.